I have no idea what's happening anymore. I don't know even why she is so upset right now. Tata and James turn a happy moment into complete hysteria. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to Nikki Faces Reality. We're here to discuss 90 Day Fiance the other way, specifically Tata and James. We're just gonna jump straight into their segment. Before we do, as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. When we see them, they're visiting her parents and immediately jump into making banana chips. As you guys probably recall in the last episode, this is the meeting where they're supposed to break the news that they're looking to move. And James was not happy with that plan. This was Tata's plan. If it were up to him, he would probably wait a few days. He says that he would want to get a little more acclimated before breaking the news. Um, but Tata, on the other hand, is confused at his hesitance because she's like, this is happy news. They miss me. But they're here and James is like, well, if we're going to break the news that we're moving, we might as well also tell them that we need money and that we need them to pay for labor. So that's the part of the convo that I don't think Tata is completely thrilled by, but it's happening, right? But when we see them interact with her parents, it gives good energy even though they can't communicate they're being playful it's obvious that her parents really adore him but a part that i want to call out is that when they were making the banana chips they went through the whole process of like bagging it sealing it and he finds out how much they make per bag which isn't a lot it's like under a dollar and <laughs> And the dad is boasting about it like this is good pay for the banana chips. But James is like shifting in his skin because he's like, that is not enough to make the car payment and the bills that we have left at home. And so it's you can tell that he's just not fully present in this moment. And so now the time has arrived. They're seated at the table sharing banana chips. Before we get into the drama, is banana chips just plantain chips? Because if it's plantain chips, I want like 14 of them. I love plantains. And when they were setting them up, they were grating cheese on it. Plantain and cheese is a dream. Because I know in some parts of the world, they refer to plantains and the fruit banana as all the same thing. So if you know, let me know. But anyway, James is sitting here trying to enjoy the banana chips, but he you could tell that he can't because he's thinking about the massive debt that they have. And so he's like, this is probably the time, you know, to, to have the conversation. And Tata's like, right now? It's funny how these two, like, match each other's freak. They, like, switch off who is applying pressure at any given moment. And this was her idea to even have the combo. And now it's him being like, go. And so she starts the conversation with, like, I have something to tell you guys, which I hate. I am too anxious to have anyone start a conversation like that with me. But the dad is like, okay. And she's like, we're thinking we are going to move to Indonesia. And the mom is like really calm. She's really stoic. She doesn't really emote, aside from that one time that we saw her crying. But she's just like, and the dad is really expressive and he says, he's like, I'm surprised, but I'm happy because now we get to make so much banana chips. So I love that this man is like, extra labor, extra hands. I thought that was hilarious. James is like, hmm, mm-hmm. And the dad is just thinking about the business. He's like, wow, that's I'm so happy that James wants to be here and keep the business going. And I want to know where he got that from. Because that's not what he said. That's not what the caption said that Tata said. Where did he get that from? In this moment, James is like, do you think that we're going to make enough to make a living to pay off our expenses and the dad is like what like what are you talking about and James reveals the debt that they've had because of the car and the dad asks for the number and James pulls the number and it's a lot of coin and the dad straight up just says we're gonna go ahead and talk about it and let you know like if, if we can help and I'm like James was asking you if you can pay for the labor, you're offering to pay off their debt. Like is like how booming is the banana chip business? Because that's big coin. So James is like, 
I don't want to burden you. I really don't think that he was expecting this. I really do think that he was like, am I going to make money to pay off ongoing expenses? Because I'm sure it goes beyond just the car debt. Like he's going to need money to get around on his own. I'm sure he doesn't want to depend on them. So I don't think that he is able to process this in this moment because it just sounds too good to be true. And like, I know, and maybe that's a little jaded, I would be happy for the help, but I would also be like, what are you expecting from me in turn, you know? Given the information that we know, I don't think that James would have asked for such a favor, but if the parents can help, that's such a gift. That's incredible. And as these two are like, oh, like that's a lot, the dad is like, kids are the parents' responsibility. And I, I mean, I think that's beautiful that he still feels like he's still responsible for Tata, even though she's a grown woman married woman but what the dad follows up with is so once you get it paid off like promise that you're never gonna take a loan and i would have been like thank you yeah you know smile and nod james is like well we can't promise that because things happen and it's true things do happen you never know like but the dad's rationale is that once you take a loan you're kind of like attached to the bank forever you know like you're you're locked in um and so he he's clearly against it but i also feel like that is the mindset of most entrepreneurs and james is not that so i should mention that of course james can't speak the language her parents can't speak english um and tata is in the middle of them translating back and forth and every time they show her her eyes progressively get redder and you could see that she's like holding in tears and so james is now red because he's uncomfortable because this conversation has now become more about like belief systems and while tata is translating for them he would like her to give more input and so he's kind of snapping at her which is not okay because she can't read your mind, you know? And my thing is, is like, I get it. As Americans, I feel like we don't want anyone to tell us what we should be doing, how we should be doing it. But her family is wiping your debt. It sounds like, like he said that he we're going to talk about it, but he's already talking about it as if he's going to do it. If the family's already wiping your debt, smile and nod. You don't have to agree on anything else. You don't even have to discuss it. Like right now you're talking about hypotheticals. So hypothetically, smile and nod, but not James. <laughs> and this may be a cultural thing. I just feel like immigrant parents, Im immigrant elders, they love to give you their wisdom, their advice, even if you didn't ask for it. That's just what they do. They don't mean any harm. And I'm sure like it can be annoying, but this is only day two of you being in Indonesia. You can handle it. Smile and nod. The fact that he's even trying to like make this a conversation where it just save that for when you can communicate in a language because i feel like also the thoughts that he's trying to express may be too complex for tata's translation and also this whole situation is a lot and you could see that she's having a hard time processing as well so the dad is not picking up on james's vibe so he keeps going in about how they should be living within their means and just you know good financial advice and James is annoyed and also continuing to try to explain himself, which, why? Um, and then continuing to get upset at the fact that Tata is only translating. And at this point, she's like tears <laughs> down her shirt. I'm laughing because I'm like, you guys didn't have to be in this situation. And here you are creating mess for no reason. You could have just stayed and worked and she, and she could have just gone to visit her family now we're here fighting about translations so tata is stressed because she's trying to translate word for word literally like james is like i think and she's like da 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 it's like that like she's not even letting him come up with a full phrase she's she's really trying to catch up and i think it's because she's also she's feeling his tension and also feeling her parents eyes on him i assume but the one note that I would have for Tata in this moment 
and not de not defending James, not so much on that, but she knows why they have the debt. She knows that that car accident, which is an unforeseen circumstance, led them to get the loan. It's not like they're getting loans for fun. They had a car accident. It was a huge bill to cover the needs for the car. You know that. You don't need James's input for that. You can say that. So that was the one point that I'm like, girl, come on. That was an unforeseeable expense. And when things like that happen and you don't have the money, you get loans. That's what we do in America. <laughs> I'm not saying it's great. That's why so many people are in debt. But sometimes that's the only way out you know? And so James is frustrated because he wants to say more. And I don't appreciate the like sly digs that he keeps like throwing at Tata's direction while nervously smiling. Like I don't like that. And that image, I'm like, how often does this happen? Because she has emotional regulation issues, but you also have some like weird underlying control I don't like it. I can't pinpoint what it is, but when you see it, you know it. And I don't like it. Like, the only person that he should be mad at right now is himself for not learning the language when he promised he would. Because then they wouldn't need a middle person. He would be able to communicate exactly what he's feeling. So you're depending on your wife. Tread carefully. And so he keeps telling her, like, speak up, like, say this, say that. And she's like, I'm trying, but I'm trying to think, and I have to think to translate. And she's also like a broken record. Every time he says something, she's like, I'm trying to translate. Mama, you have to move forward. Cut it out. He said, stop translating. He said, say something else. And you would think that because she felt so passionate about this move, that she would have things ready. But again, that that did not prepare for this move. She's trying not to look like they're fighting in front of her parents because, yeah, her parents are right in front of her. But it's tense, okay? And her tears are running down her face. Like, her parents must be like, what happened? Like, one minute you tell us you're going to move and it's happy, but now you're crying? Like, what's what's going on here? She just looks defeated because he's telling her that she's not doing enough. And what Jane says is that they've had a conversation already about not wanting to feel like they're burdening her parents. His thing is, we've already talked about this, so I want to make sure that you're making it clear to them that we didn't move here so that they can take care of us. And I get that. However, comma, what exactly did you think was going to happen? Because you guys didn't discuss any other version of a plan. I have a hard time believing that either of y'all didn't expect that you would be taken care of. So again, James is like, I told you that I would follow your lead. And I get it because this is her home turf. This move was her idea. But at the same time, you could communicate that much better. I already told you guys that she's like a child. She's like fixated on the part that she's like, I'm translating, I'm translating. He's like, stop. I don't need you to translate. I need you to speak. You know what's going on. Speak. And again, I support the message. I do not support the delivery. And I feel like the way that they're interacting, I'm like, how often does this happen? Because the way that she was looking at him was almost like, you're doing this again. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but she just was like, don't do this again in front of my parents. That's the vibe that I got. So when she kept repeating that she's translating, I'm like, girl, you need to move on. The important part of this is the messaging that you're giving your parents and you're supposed to thank them for their support. And instead, you're here bickering with your husband, especially because she's speaking English the entire time. Can you imagine someone having a full meltdown in front of you and you're like, I can't intervene because I don't know what's being said. And it's husband and wife, so you also like want to give it distance. So she expresses that she feels like he's pushing her, like he's not giving her time to think. But this was her idea. This was masterminded by her. So again, her lack of preparation, I'm like, girl, this is your problem. And so she's seated here in front of her parents, just like so ashamed that she's even having this fight in front of them, which they didn't have to have. I think that that alone is like 
read the room. But they had it. She's looking at them with tears in her eyes, not really being able to explain herself. And she starts apologizing, saying that she doesn't want to be a burden to them, that she's burdening them even after being married. Whether you fought or not with your husband, this was always your plan. Nothing has changed except the fact that your husband is being pissy. Did you not think that you were burdening them when you came up with this to begin with? I'm so confused. And so the mom finally speaks and is like, there's no issue with you moving. I'm so happy that you're going to be here. But she nails the coffin by saying, and when you have children, they'll be your responsibility. And I think mama said that from a place of you're my child, therefore you're my responsibility. It's my pleasure to take care of you. I think that's how she meant it. But Tata is hearing that and thinking, well, I may never have children. I may never experience that love because my husband doesn't want to have children, but he doesn't know that I know that he doesn't want to have children. And she just starts shaking in her seat, crying, and then just like breaks down. And then it becomes wailing. And everyone is just like, what happened? Kamu kan punya anak. Harus tahu jawab gitu. Nanti yang membalas kamu anak-anaknya. And her mom gets up to comfort her, and she's in her mom's arms, and she goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I'm burdening you. And the dad comes from left field and is like, ask her for forgiveness, like kiss her feet, something like that. And I'm like, ask for forgiveness for what? You just said it was okay. You just welcomed it. You just offered solutions. And I realized that this is a cultural difference and I'm clearly not in the loop. So if you know why that is, please do let me know in the comments. But I was just like, whoa, this is escalating. <laughs> Things have escalated very, very quickly. I have no idea what's happening anymore. I don't know even why she is so upset right now. I feel very alone. God, I'm confused. James doesn't really know what happened because everything happened in her mother tongue. So the imagery of her just wailing and then all of a sudden crying into her mother's feet and kissing it, yeah. It's startling, especially because he has no idea what she knows. And I wonder when she's going to drop that she knows that he doesn't want kids. I'm surprised she hasn't mentioned it yet. Like, that's big. Yeah, so this episode is a roller coaster. Next week looks like they're going to keep fighting. So we'll be tuned in for that. Let me know your thoughts on this segment. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.